All right, today we are going to look at a T-beam problem and apply what you know about tau equals VQ over IT to find the shear stresses and shear flow in the cross-section. So here is our cross-section. It's 1 inch wide by 4 inches high on the web, 1.25 inches high by 3 inches wide on the flange located at the top. First thing we'll have to do is calculate the neutral axis, after which we can then start to calculate the shear stresses at different cuts. First we'll look at cut A, 1.5 inches up from the base of the web. Cut B, which will be located 3.5 inches from the base of the web. Cut C, which will be located at the joint of the flange and web. Cut D, which will be located on the top side of cut C. Cut E, a vertical cut 0.5 inches from the left hand side of the flange. And finally cut F down the middle of the flange. So first, let us calculate the neutral axis. Here's our cross section again, and we will apply an axis of M and N at the base of the web. Now we only need to calculate the neutral axis about the M axis, since the N axis is a line of symmetry for the cross section. To do this, we will calculate the summation of NI AI, or the distance from the midpoint of a section to the M axis, multiplied by the area of that section. For the purple section shown, we will have a distance of 2 inches multiplied by an area of 4 inches by 1 inch. The blue section has a distance of 4 inches plus 1.25 inches over 2, multiplied by an area of 3 inches by 1.25 inches, giving us a total summation of 25.3438 inches cubed. Now that we've calculated the summation of NIAIs, we need to calculate the total area of the cross section. This is an easy calculation since the cross section is just two rectangles. One 3 inches by 1.25 inches, the other 4 inches by 1 inch, for a total area of 7.75 inches squared. Using these two values, we can now solve for the neutral axis point, which is approximately 3.27 inches up from the base of the web. Now that we've found the neutral axis, we'll need to calculate the moment of inertia about the z-axis for the cross section. To do this, we'll break it into three rectangular parts, the blue, the red, and the green part, as shown. For the blue and the red part, since the rectangles stand vertically touching the neutral axis, we'll use BH cubed over 3. For the green part, we'll use the standard BH cubed over 12 for a rectangle, but we'll have to include the parallel axis theorem part of A times DX squared. Plugging in the values for each of the three rectangles, the blue, the red, and the green, into the IZ equation, and remembering to incorporate the ADX squared term for the green rectangle, we can now calculate the moment of inertia about the z-axis, or iz, and find that it is approximately equal to 19.1583 inches to the fourth. Now that we've calculated the moment of inertia as well as the neutral axis, let's take a cut at A and calculate the shear stress. Here's our 3D model with the neutral axis as well as the coordinate system shown. And taking the cut at A, 1.5 inches up from the base of the web, we can calculate our tau yx and tau xy as shown. Now we will use x equilibrium for this calculation. And remember our equation is tau yx equals vq over it. The v for this problem will be 400 pounds. The thickness is the area we cut through to make the cut, which is one inch. And our i is 19.1583 inches to the fourth as we calculated earlier. Q is the area of the section we're looking at multiplied by the distance from its midpoint to the neutral axis or 1.5 inches times 1 inch, multiplied by 3.27 inches minus 0.75 inches, giving us a Q of 3.78 inches cubed. Now using the value for Q that we just found, along with the V, T, and I that we show above, let's plug it into our tau yx equation and solve for the shear stress, which we find to be approximately 78.92 psi. Now don't forget that because of x equilibrium, the tau xy and tau yx are equal to each other. Okay, so let's move on to our next cut, which will be cut B. Here's our 3D model and our neutral axis and coordinate system. Now, cut B was 3.5 inches up from the base of the web, so here's all of our measurements, as well as our tau yx and tau xy drawn out of the diagram. Using x equilibrium again, and our tau yx equals vq over it, with a v of 400 pounds once more, t is still 1 inch, I is 19.1583 inches to the fourth. The Q for this section will be 3.5 inches times 1 inch, multiplied by 3.27 inches minus 1.75 inches, 
for a total Q of 5.32 inches cubed. Now plugging all of those values into our tau yx equation, we can find that our tau yx is approximately 111.075 psi. Now let's take a look at cut C. Cut C was at the top of the web where it joined with the flange. Here is our neutral axis and coordinate system, as well as all the measurements. We'll use x equilibrium again, tau yx equals vq over it, as always. V is 400 pounds, T is still 1 inch in this cut, I is 19.1583 inches to the fourth. The Q for this area is 4 inches times 1 inch, multiplied by 3.27 inches minus 2 inches, for a total of 5.08 inches cubed. Now plugging all of these values into our tau equation, we can calculate the tau yx at this cut is approximately 106.064 psi. And always remember that equilibrium holds. So let's look at cut D. Cut D is across the same line as C, only we're going to look at the flange side this time. So here's our neutral axis and coordinate system, along with all the measurements we'll need, and our tau force is drawn in. Using VQ over IT again, with a V of 400 pounds, the thickness this time is 3 inches, since we cut across the entire length of the flange, and our I is still 19.1583 inches to the fourth. So let's solve for Q. Q for this section is going to be 3 inches times 1.25 inches, multiplied by 0.73 inches plus 0.625 inches for 5.08125 inches cubed. Plugging all of these values into our tau equation, we find that the tau yx is approximately 35.36 psi for this cut. And let's look at cut E now. Again, neutral axis and our cut shown. On cut E, we will still use x equilibrium, but it's going to be tau zx instead of xy. Same equation, v is still 400 pounds. We cut through 1.25 inches of material this time, so that's our t, and our i is still 19.1583 inches to the fourth. The q for this section is going to be 0.125 inches times 0.5 inches, multiplied by 0.73 inches plus 0.625 inches for a total of 0.84687 inches cubed. Plugging all of this in, we can find our tau zx is approximately 14.15 psi, and still equilibrium will hold. And finally, let's look at cut f. Cut f is down the middle of the flange. So here's our 3D model with our neutral axis and coordinate system, along with all of our measurements. Still going to use x equilibrium again, as well as tau equals vq over it. The V is still the 400 pounds that we've been using the whole time. The thickness is once more 1.25 inches on this cut, and our I is 19.1583 inches to the fourth. The Q for this area is going to be 1.5 inches times 1.25 inches, multiplied by 0.73 inches plus 0.625 inches, for a total Q of 2.54063 inches cubed. Plugging all of that in, we can find our tau ZX is going to be approximately equal to 42.44 psi. So now that we've calculated all of the shear stresses, we can go ahead and take a look at the shear flow. Now the flow is going to move in from the outsides of each end of the flange, flowing inward to the middle of the flange, joining together and flowing down through the web to the base of the cross section. If we were to look at cut C, we can calculate the shear flow through C which is just equal to its shear stress times local thickness. So for QC, or shear flow through C, we can find that the equation is tau C TC, or 106.064 psi times 1 inch, for approximately 106 pounds per inch. Now we can take a look at cut D and find the shear flow through that. QD again is tau D TD, which is 35.36 psi times 3 inches, or approximately 106 pounds per inch. And the last thing we'll look at is the shear flow through cut F. Shear flow through cut F is going to again be tau F TF, which is 42.44 psi times 1.25 inches, or approximately 53 pounds per inch. Now it's pretty obvious that QC equals QD, but those are double the size of QF. And this makes logical sense if you think about the fact that the shear flow of QF flows in from each side of the flange, joining in the middle to become QD. Then QD flows down through the flange into the web 
and becomes QC as it moves through the rest of the cross section. So that was a nice problem that showed us how you can use tau equals VQ over IT to calculate not only the shear stresses in a cross section, but also the shear flow through that cross section.